Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's grade 10 math class. This is 3.5 properties of circles. Okay, so the first question asks us to verify that the center of the circle lies on the right bisector of the chord AB. So remember that verifying means that we are just proving it for one specific case and this is a specific case that they've given us and they've actually given us the midpoint as well, which we could verify but um, it is correct. So uh, here's the property for you that the um, right bisector of a chord will go through the center of the circle. Um, so, and we can see that the center of the circle is 0, 0. So I'm just going to find the right bisector and then uh, prove that 0, 0 is on, the, on that line. Um, so first I'm going to find the slope of AB and don't forget to write the equation nice and neat, x2 minus x1, there we go. And I'm just going to make sure that I do it properly, write it in here, 2 minus negative 4 and 4 minus 2, uh, which gives us 6 over 2, so that's 3. So the perpendicular slope is going to be negative 1 over 3, the uh, negative reciprocal. So we're going to use y equals mx plus b. Um, in this case, the y is negative 1 and the m negative 1 third times 3 plus b. So we get negative 1 over 3 times 3, that's negative 1, so negative 1 plus 1, 0. So we get y equals negative 1 third x. And that is the equation of our perpendicular bisector. And if you want, you can just write it down in case uh, you feel like you're going to forget or something like that. Perpendicular bisector is the same thing as the right bisector. It just m implies the right angle, right? So this is our, our right angle right here. So we want to prove that goes through this point zero, zero. Um, so we're going to do a check. Uh, so the left side and the right side, and I'm sure you did this in grade 9. So you're at y and negative one-third x, and then we're going to plug in zero and zero. So zero equals negative one-third times zero, which is true. So it's true, right? So the center of the circle passes through, or is on, lies on the right bisector of AB. There you go. Okay, so we're just showing all of our steps uh, logically, and then we do it. Okay. Next question. A circle has center at C41. We want to show that the points P, Q, and R all lie on the circle. So um, it doesn't tell us what the radius is, so we're first going to find the radius of the circle. Let's let the radius be R. So the Radius is going to be a length that's x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. You can see I'm just extending that because I want to make sure it all fits underneath. And I'm going to use c and p. So maybe you want to write cp like this. Uh, so we're going to do um, 9 minus 4 squared plus negative 3 minus 1 squared which gives us uh, the square root of 41. So that's going to give us the equation of the circle. So make sure you write the formula first. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. And we have the center, it's 4, 1. So I'm going to plug that into the equation y minus 1 squared, and r squared, so the square of root 41 is just 41. Let's just take the radicand, and there we go. That's the equation of our circle. And we want to show that q and r satisfy this, so um, we can substitute q into equation. So uh, 8 minus 4 squared plus 6 minus 1 squared, which is 41, so that's perfect. So therefore, Q is on the circle. Of course, we learned that if the number was smaller, then it would be um, inside of the circle, as in it's in this, you know, 
your inside of the circle, saying inside of the circle. If the number was bigger than the radius, then it would be out the, outside of the circle. If it's equal to the radius, it's on the circle. So that's how we know. And then we're going to substitute p into the equation. Oh, sorry, r into the equation. My bad. So <coughs> we're going to do negative 1 minus 4 squared plus 5 minus 1 squared. And this actually ends up being 41 as well. So we're done. Uh, therefore, r is also on the circle. That's what the question asked us, so we're done with A. Does any other circle pass through the points P, Q, and R? Now we can prove this algebraically, and uh, if you'd like to watch that, I'm going to put a video right here. Um, but as for regular uh, solving, we're just going to show using properties of triangles, because actually P, Q, R forms form a a triangle, the points PQR form a triangle, and uh, the right bisectors meet at the circumcenter, that's the definition of the circumcenter, right, which is the center just run out of space there, which is the center of a circle that touches P, Q, and R. There is only one circumcenter, therefore there can only be one unique circum circumcircle, right? So it's the only one. This is the only circle. There can only be one. All right, so you can see this is all written out. We just want to make sure we follow a certain logic and that um, you don't miss any steps and then it's a good answer. Okay, so this is a good communication question actually. All right, we're going to do one more. Find the equation of the circumcircle of the triangle with vertices M, P, and Q. So um, we've done this before. I just want to make sure that we formally did it and everyone knows what the procedure is. Uh, it's very similar to finding the centroid. Um, all we have to do is find the right bisectors, right? So this is going to be the intersection of the right bisectors. So I'm going to just do two of them because I only need to do two. So I'm going to do the midpoint of MP. Bisector means it goes through the, uh, the midpoint. And if you want, you can draw it out and it might help you to just keep everything straight. I know that helps me sometimes, so 9 plus 3 is 12 divided by 2 is 6, and 5 plus 1 is 6, divided by 2 is 3. And again, if you want to put this step in here, that's okay. Do that. Go ahead. I'm just going to skip over. All right, so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 gives us a slope. It's going to be uh, 5 minus 1 over six mi 9 minus 3, which is 6. So it's 2 over 3, 4 over 6, which is 2 over 3. So the perpendicular slope, just going to change colors, perpendicular slope is negative 3 over 2. And we're just going to plug this into our equation. So y equals mx plus b. Uh, so, oops, I don't want to lose my point there. So 3 equals uh, negative 3 over 2 times 6 plus b. Um, so this ends up being negative 9, and we move it over, so 12 equals b, so we get the equation y equals negative 3 over 2x plus 12, like that. Okay, so I found my first perpendicular bisector. I'm going to do another one. Um, and you can see I'm just keeping it straight by putting the little letter there, and I know there's a, another m. I'm using a big M plus a subscript, so it separates them, keeps them, uh, keeps them straight, and it's fine for 
for your uh, reader. Uh, now, if you wanted to draw a diagram and, and plug those, uh, you know, put those midpoints in and then um, label them, then that counts as your let statement. So you could do that too if you wanted. I'm just going to not do that though. So I'm going to do for PQ as well, and since I wrote the formulas already, I don't have to rewrite them. So the midpoint of PQ is 3 minus 1, which is 2 over 2, 1, and 1 minus 3, so negative 1 here. And the slope PQ is going to be, and actually, maybe I should, um, <laughs> just in case I get it wrong, I just want to be a little careful, negative 1 minus 3. So you can write the, the things in, then you can see what your points are, just to make sure you got it right. So negative 4 over negative 4 is 1, so the perpendicular slope is 1. Oops, negative 1. <laughs> Sorry. So now we're going to do y equals mx plus b again. So I'm going to do uh, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, so negative 1 here equals negative 1 times 1 plus b. So you can see that b is equal to 0, and I get my second equation, y equals negative x. And if you're putting this negative 1x, I am going to take off marks, you should always make that 1 disappear. It's a secret ninja. Okay, so now I have my two right bisectors, and I'm going to find the POI. Oops, I'm just trying to get back up here. All right, so um, equate the two perpendicular bisectors. Um, so I had negative 3 over 2x plus 12 and I had y equals negative x. So I'm just going to move this one over to this side and leave the 12 on this side. So I get um, 12 equals 1 half x, so x equals 24. And I'll substitute x equals 24 into y equals negative x. And if you want to label the equations you can if that, you think that's going to be a little bit easier for you. So y equals negative x, and so we know y equals negative 24. So the center of the circle is 24, negative 24. Okay, so now that we've got that, we just need to find the radius. If it asks us for the circumcenter, then we don't have to do it, but it says find the equation of the circumcircle. Make sure you read the question, because you'll lose a lot of marks if you don't finish the question, and you would be really sad about it, because you probably know how to do it, you just uh, didn't, so that would be too bad. Okay, so again, we're just finding the formula, putting it in here, and if you want to use not H and K, you can. Um, I always do. So we're going to get x minus 24 squared plus uh, y mi plus 24 squared equals r squared. So you can plug one of the um, numbers or one of the points into here. I'm going to use the length formula. Length equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And I'm using, I'm going to do of, um, let's call that c. I'm going to do cm maybe m is 9, 5. So c is 24, negative 24, m is 9, 5, just so I can keep it straight. So this is going to be 24 minus 9 squared plus negative 24 minus 5 squared. Oop. And this ends up being the square root of 1066, uh, which is the radius. Okay, so the radius is root 1066, so I can fill that in here. x minus 24 squared plus y plus 24 squared equals 1066. Just plug that in right there. And that is my answer. I'm going to do a little victory dance. Whoop. And we're done. Yay! So since it's a word problem, I'll write the circumcircle is. It gives me a word solution. And we're done. Okay, so that is it. Basically, the only property that we learned was that the right bisector uh, passes through the center of a circle. And if you like, there are tons and tons of properties of circles. 
um, that are really useful for contests and a lot of them are actually in your agenda so if you look in the math section in your agenda um, you can do you can find them there oops the right bisector um, contains the center <coughs> of the circle sorry I got distracted <laughs> let me finish one thing at once right bisector of a chord contains the center of the circle. Okay, so yes, if you would like to look at some of the properties of circles that might be useful for contests, you can let me know or you can look in your uh, agenda. And um, other than that, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you soon. Bye!